Revolutionary War hero, Nathan Hale, was one of America's first official spies. His bravery and sacrifice for his country in time of war makes him a great American hero. He has been honored in many ways. A statue at Yale University and a monument in his hometown. But it wasn't until well after the revolution ended that he was established as a hero. Nathan Hale's father came here from Massachusetts in the 1740s and married a local girl, Elizabeth Strong, whose uncles lived right across the street. That might be how Elizabeth and Richard met. Together they, um, they married and they went on to have a very large family. Nathan Hale was born in Coventry, Connecticut in 1755. Not much is known about his early years, but at age 14, he attended Yale University in New Haven, Connecticut, and graduated at 17 with first honors. Deacon Hale could not afford to educate all of his children. He had eight sons, and he selected uh, from among the older Nathan and his one and a half year older brother Enoch, and together they went to Yale when Nathan was 14 and Enoch was 15, which was actually a bit old for the time. And any account that we have indicates he was a very bright, uh, athletic, interesting young man who uh, took his studies seriously and also was uh, apparently very well liked by his friends. Hale went on to teach in East Haddam and New London before joining the military in 1774 as a first sergeant in the local militia. And when Lexington and Concord occurred in April of 1775, there was a uh, kind of a rally or a reaction rally in London and people came and they were enthusiastic about taking up arms against the British. And he apparently was a, one of the leading spokesmen and said we have to drop everything in and take up arms uh, t to achieve liberty. He later joined the 7th Connecticut Regiment of the official Continental Army as a captain. By August of 1776 the British really occupied New York and from there they could branch out into Connecticut up state New York or down into New Jersey, however they wanted to go. So it was a key bastion of uh, importance to them militarily, economically, politically. In 1776, Hale was chosen by Thomas Knowlton to become part of Knowlton's Rangers. Thomas Knowlton was a Connecticut man, and he was assigned by Washington to uh, develop what we might call the Special Forces. In September of 1776, General George Washington desperately needed a reliable source of information about the British campaign. And Knowlton, according to the records we have, came back to the Connecticut officers and said, we need to uh, come up with someone who would uh, be the first person to go behind enemy lines. And uh, that's when Hale volunteered. From what we know, uh, was in Manhattan went up to, through Westchester County to Norwalk and crossed the Long Island Sound from Norwalk to approximately where Huntington, Long Island is. That's where he landed. Hale successfully infiltrated New York City disguised as a Dutch school teacher. While spending time in a tavern, a group of loyalists suspected him as a spy and reported him to British soldiers. Hale was taken before British General Sir William Howe who sentenced him to death by hanging for espionage. It was during his execution that he spoke his famous words. I only regret that I have but one life to lose for my country. A line which comes from an old play uh, by Cato, uh, the Cato is the play, and he apparently indicated that line because he knew the British would understand it. He was only 21 years old when he was executed. So all of the details, and they're very few, but the details that we have come from the British account. Lieutenant Robert McKinsey, a British officer, wrote about Hale in a diary, saying, He behaved with great composure and resolution, saying he thought it the duty of every good officer to obey any orders given to him by his commander-in-chief, and desired the spectators at all times to meet death in whatever shape it may appear. Hale's sacrifice went unheard of except for a select few, including his family and his good friend, William Hull. Hull, I believe, had been a classmate of, of Hale's. Later on, was part of a movement to gain further recognition for Nathan Hale as uh, someone that the country should honor. Nathan's name 
was somewhat buried. He was just really another soldier who died in the war. There were many other Americans that, that died in New York at the same time. There were battles going on. But when you don't get even Washington uttering his name or any of the higher-ups, one can well understand why his name kind of floated out there into almost obscurity. It was not until the early 20th century when George Dudley Seymour put a major push into making Nathan Hale a household name that uh, his name became known nationally. And today he's a uh, Connecticut State hero. Students at Yale University in New Haven, Connecticut pass by the statue of Nathan Hale every day. He's kind of helped make Yale more famous in the sense that like everyone who comes here on a tour stops by Nathan Hale. Well, I look at Nathan Hale as a symbol, and I think that he's especially relevant in uh, the past few years because we have thousands of young men and women who are doing almost the, the same sort of thing that Nathan did in terms of sacrificing their own private lives in the service of their country. Heroes like Hale are symbols of unyielding patriotism that Americans should never forget.